G'day, and uh, welcome back to another video. I'm sorry I haven't posted on here in a bit. It um, has been a little while. If I'm honest, I've been a bit distracted, and not for obvious news. Uh, I bought a Jeep, and behind that is actually, or in front of that, is actually a camper trailer, which I bought as well. So I've been a bit distracted with uh, other projects and YouTube channels and all the rest. So I do apologize, guys, that I haven't had a chance to uh, catch up with you all. But, uh, seeing as most of us are now hitting lockdown, uh, there's not too much we can really do uh, in the way of going out riding and adventuring. It's a bit irresponsible at this point. Uh, so I'm myself trying to do my best part to self-isolate and uh, avoid being out there and seeing people. I should say I am lucky enough that I can actually work from home and do my normal day job. So I hope everyone out there is okay. Uh, I know a lot of people lost their jobs and things like that. If there's anything I can do, hit me up in the comments below. Um, happy to just have a chat if you're sitting there bored and need something to do. Anyway, um, today we're going to work on the old Hyosa. Uh, you can see I've already got it up on stand and it sounds super healthy. That's actually just the chain hitting the stand, but anyway. We are going to uh, start with just some maintenance. I'm sure, like me, we've all got that outstanding thing where we just want to ride it, but we just don't really get through and do the maintenance. So today, uh, we're going to go through, I'll walk you through how to properly clean down and adjust your chain. Uh, we're gonna pull apart the rear drum brake on this thing and uh, do a little bit of maintenance on that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm hoping to post a few more videos since I've got a little bit of extra time right now. Uh, I do also have a little sneak peek. of something fun I've been working on for you guys. This uh, little contraption here should be a new replacement speedo to get rid of the big, dirty, great big cluster on the front of the bike, just going to a single LCD screen. Uh, but this will probably come in another video. So if you want to see it, you know, subscribe, like, all the things uh, to keep me. And if you don't see it in the next week or so, um, drop a comment below, chase me up. Ask me why I haven't done it yet, because I mean, I actually built that speedo like months ago. I just never got around to fitting it to the bike. So, enough talking from me. Let's get in and uh, do some maintenance. Alrighty, so that we can do this one today, uh, there's a few things we're gonna need. Let's start with the tools. First off, it's not actually a tool, but I'm gonna recommend some gloves. Working with the chain is messy. Cleaning grease out of your fingers when you're supposed to be working is always a great deal of fun. Uh, an adjustable torque wrench. Um, you can get away without it if you don't have one and you don't want to run down the shops um, by paying attention to how tight you do up the rear axle but uh, obviously I have one so I'm going to use it you'll need a 21 oh sorry 22 mil to undo the rear bolt a 21 mil spanner for the other side actually that's yep and a more spanner for your chain adjuster so uh, let's crack into this first thing you're obviously going to want to do uh, is put the bike up on some form of stand I've got mine up on jack stands on either side so it's nice and safe and not rickety uh, you can technically do this with the bike on the ground it's just nowhere near as easy um, and always make sure that whatever you do the bike is nice and stable you don't want to have a repeat of when I left the fuel tank balancing awkwardly on top of the bike uh, mistakes will happen no matter how stable you think it is so, let's get into this. So on our right side, we've got our nut. Obviously the exhaust is gonna be in the way, depending on if you kept that chrome guard. It depends on how much in the way it's gonna be. We just wanna put our spanner on there to stop it spinning. And then on the opposite side, ah, we've got our bolt, which is our main axle bolt. So all we're gonna do on this one is put our 22 on there and just crack it so that it starts coming loose. Obviously my bike's on stands, so lifting it up is not the wisest thing to do. It's best to just make sure you don't knock your bike off of balance.
Now an important little note, if you were just adjusting uh, your chain to tighten it, all you'd have to do is crack that bolt, you wouldn't have to take the nut all the way off. Uh, and you can then, using the adjusters, which are down here and here, you can tighten them evenly uh, to pull your chain back or loosen them to push your chain in if it's over tightened. Uh, but we'll get back into that more when we get to uh, putting the wheel back on because we're pulling it all apart today. A nice little tip when you're doing these is to make sure you lay out all the parts that you take out somewhere where it'll easily make sense for putting it all back together. Uh, otherwise you might run into a little bit of trouble with uh, reassembly when you don't know what you're doing. Luckily for me, we're on film so I can easily replay what I've done provided I actually shot a decent angle. Um, but yes, make sure you keep everything together and you know exactly where it goes back that way. Alright, let's pull that axle out. Now one thing you might have to do just to make things a little bit easier is loosen up your chain adjusters a little bit just so they're nice and loose and it'll allow that bolt to come back through. Same on the other side. Now, there is only one thing left that's really sort of going to be holding everything in place and in the way and that's the chain itself. So we're going to slide the wheel forward a little to pop this chain off. I haven't let enough off my adjuster. And I forgot a tool, and I forgot to do something. Ugh. Little amendment, we're going to need a 10 mil. I'm going to pull the chain guard off because it just gets in the way. You can do it without pulling it off, but I don't really feel like struggling that much today. So that one, so it's just two 10 mils and a bit of a wiggly squeeze to get it out. And there, my nice loose chain. I can loose the chain. Alrighty. Now, what I'm going to do now what we're going to do is just use my feet and nice safety work feet on to support the weight of the wheel pull the main axle bolt out placing it over with my other parts and then we should be able to just roll slash slide this out my chain would get out of the way why is the ongoing theme that I just feel like, look like I don't know what I'm doing. I've done this so many times I can't count. Uh, little tip, take it slow, think about what you're doing. In my case, I forgot to undo the drum brake, so that's still attached, which is why my wheel's sitting on a weird angle. So just gonna quickly nip that off, and then the whole rear tire will come off. So down here is my chain adjuster. I'm just gonna undo that by just turning it until the bolt undoes. And that'll be the last thing holding my rear wheel in. Personally, I like to put the adjuster nut straight back onto the end of the adjuster, which is just here, just so I don't lose that one, because that would not be fun to try and find. Two little things that came out then. This is the side spacer for this side next to the drum brake. Uh, make sure you pay attention to the orientation because it does have one. Uh, and ditto for the other side of the spacer, but luckily on this one we can see there's a grease line where it fits in against the wheel bearing. So, if you do, like me, it just happens to roll out and you didn't see which way it goes in. Nice and easy, the smaller end goes on the inside. You can tell by lining it up with the side of your drum brake and you'll be easily able to see that. So let's pull this wheel out. Ah. 
Once you've got your rear wheel out, uh, the drum brake will sit in on this side and you should just be able to, you might have to wiggle it, give it a tap with a mallet. In my case, it just fell out and we can have a look and inspect inside our rear brake. So in my case, it's a little bit scored. It is very dirty, so it just needs a clean out. It's giving me a lot of brake squeal at the moment. So uh, one thing definitely to look out for. So we'll get some brake cleaner and clean that off. And then on our drum, we just want to make sure that there's plenty of pad material left on the outside and it's nice and evenly wearing, which mine is good. So good news there is that all I need to do is clean it off. I don't have to replace them. Swiveling back over to my chain. Uh, I don't know how much you guys can see, but it is getting a bit rusty um, and a bit gross. If I'm honest, this one's starting to stretch a fair way, so I'm probably about due to replace it. Uh, but I'm not in the mood for dealing with that and postage and making some poor pasty go out and pick things up and do all the rest uh, given today's climate. So we are just going to clean this one down uh, as best we can. Now at this stage you can take the chain cover off and completely remove the chain. I don't really, I'm not going to do that today. Um, seems like just a little bit extra effort considering the heat. So what I'll do, I'll get some uh, parts cleaner. I'll go over and uh, wipe this all the way down, uh, give it a good scrub and then follow that up with some nice chain loop over the whole thing again and uh, keep running it through until it is clean. So we might time lapse that. If I'm honest, I'm actually going to go have some coffee or a beer or something. I'll check what time in the morning it is. And then we'll time lapse that and uh, come back when it comes to reassembly time. Alrighty, failed at the time lapse. I uh, did have a coffee. Moving on from there. Uh, we're just going to quickly, before we put everything back together, address this rear brake issue that I've got. So my rear brakes, whenever I put my foot on the brake, it is squealing like mad. Uh, especially when the bike's cold, drives me mad. Obviously, because it's not constant, it goes away and comes back. Uh, it was a dust-related issue, which you get in drum brakes, because as you saw, there's normally cover over this, and there's nowhere for the dust to go as the pad wears down. So, um, what we're going to do is just give this a quick clean-up, get some of the dust out of it. Now, to do that, I've just got some brake cleaner, a little bit of emery tape or sandpaper, and it's going to roughen up this edge. Now, something that people often make the mistake of thinking is that brake rotors and drum brakes should be smooth. Uh, you don't actually want them smooth, but that's how you get a lot more squealing, uh, especially when cold braking. Uh, think of it, if you run your hands down glass or something like that, you get that squeak when you've got soft fingers and soft glass. You want things to be a little bit rough so they grab and aren't so bad. So, just going to go through, I'll give it a quick little roughen up, and then we'll uh, spray it out, wipe it down, and we can pop it all back together. Done. So, uh, last things we're going to do, we're going to, actually, there's no more last things. We're going to pop the brake back on and reassemble and call it done. And, turns out I'm a bit of a liar. Uh, we're actually going to wrap off this video now. I'm going to run through the reinstallation process, so tightening your chain, getting everything right uh, in a separate video. Uh, main reason for that is I actually, looking at my wheels, they are disgustingly dirty, or that rear wheel. And I kind of want to paint it. I want to see what it'd look like black. And I happen to have a little bit of matte black paint left from previous projects. So, uh, I apologize if that was misleading, but we will reassemble this in the next video. Uh, I'll aim to get it back up the next day or two, but uh, we're going to paint these wheels and I might even film that and we'll go from there. So, I will catch you guys in the next one. Be sure to like, subscribe, all the stuff. Let me know how you're doing. Are you in lockdown? Are you, um, Make and do. Are you like me and pretending to work and instead working on motorbikes? Unless you work with me, in that case I am doing this outside hours. See you guys. See you guys. We're not quite done yet. Uh, hold on. I have a few comments to read and subscribers to talk to. So, uh, first off, William, welcome. A couple of days ago you joined up. Uh, sorry, William Morin and William Morgan. Okay, got the wheels on board. Uh, Tao, welcome along. I uh, had a comment from Nazmi, uh, who's from Malaysia and has a Hyo GV250. Mate, send us a pic, sounds awesome. Uh, Run Andy Run, welcome along. You came along last week with Mat Matthias. Matthias? I'm not going to try your last name. I'm Australian, I'm not good with that sort of thing. Uh, along with Beetle Booze, welcome to the channel. So, again, um, I will catch you guys in the next one. See ya.